Hi, you are welcome to The Morning Ride. My name is Anita, of course, and today I'm coming to you from a hotel somewhere around East Legon. I tracked down a very fine young man that I know you would want to hear about. Uh, well, it's football season, so I thought, you know, I will go in the way of football. The last time I interviewed one of such people was when we went to visit Emmanuel Ebue in his home. So make sure you stick around and then let's enjoy it. How do I do? Okay, so ta-da, you have your surprise here. Wait for the interview and uh, don't move my age. You want to give them a thumbs up or something? Yeah, yeah. sure. <laughs> Welcome back, and uh, John Paintel is uh, with me here. It's such a pleasure having you. Yes, it's, it's, it's such a pleasure having you here. And uh, it's unfortunate, you know, the match is being shown today, but this program is pre-recorded. It will be shown tomorrow. So let's have your predictions for, 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 for the match. Who, who's going to win? Of course, you will say Ghana. Of course. Of course. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the only three points we want, that's most important, and it doesn't matter. Um, how many goals we score. The okay. only thing we want is to beat them handsomely and get our three points. And I believe the boys are ready to do the job. You know, I, I don't get the whole football and, and, and points. It's one goal is equal to how many points? Three? If you, if you score one and the uh, uh, opponent team couldn't score anything then it's, it's one zero. So you get the maximum three points. Oh, yeah. okay. So either it's 10 nil or 20 nil, still three points. Three points. Yeah, I so. see. Once the other opponent does not sp score, score yeah. it's three points. Yeah. Okay, so mm -hmm. we are guaranteed three points. We are. Right, so yeah. John that says we are winning. We are getting, it doesn't matter how many goals we score, but then we need our three points. So tomorrow by this time, like some of the pastors will say, we'll have our three points. Anyway, it's, it's such a pleasure uh, having you here today. I'm both excited and uh, I'm starstruck, you know, yeah. at, the, <laughs> at, at the same time. You have a fantastic career. I mean, you're a fantastic player. Most of these young ones who are coming up look up to you. How does that feel? Does that put a bit of pressure on you? How, how does it feel? Um, at this level, I can't say there's a pressure. Yes. I mean, it's like the beginning that I can say over here, when I was starting, was a bit difficult. I mean, meeting senior players. I mean, first time joined the national under 20, under 23, and then the Black Stars team. But now that, um, like, can say that I've uh, matured enough <laughs> yeah, to just to take it easy and also um, share my experience uh, starting with the young ones. Absolutely. So can you take us a bit from, you know, where you came from? I, I'm, I'm a football fan. Everybody knows that the team I support in the whole world is Deportivo de la Corona. You know, they are all laughing. Yeah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Deportivo, and all I know is that they score. I mean, when I hear goal, that's it. You know, I don't know the technicalities, but I do love football. Um, can you take us through how football began for you? Yeah, um, it was uh, so simple. Um, first of all, when I was starting, my parents wanted me to go to school and know much about uh, education. Yes. You know how to read and write. And write, absolutely. Yeah. And they knew that one day uh, I'll become one of the stars and yeah, I was also believing because when I was in school, I used to play for schools everywhere I've been to. Um, even when I was in my senior secondary school in New Jabin, New Jacopo, New Jabin College of Commerce. Uh, oh, that's where you went? Yeah. So, okay. <laughs> the, <laughs> the principal wanted to give me a scholarship, but um, I was lucky uh, to even have a bursary, so I was paying half of the fees. Good for it you. It was good, yeah, mm -hmm. because I was doing all kind of uh, activities for the school, not only football, but volleyball, um, long jump, triple jump, high jump, 
all kinds. So I was doing more and producing more. So you're more a versatile sessions. sportsman. <laughs> yes, I was. I was so active. So, I mean, um, my uh, football career begins after my senior secondary school. That was uh, 1999. 1999. Yeah, then I joined a team called Brekum Masters in Brekum. It started from um, second division to first division, then we got promoted to premiership. Wow. Wonderful. So, so far you've been in football for how many years? Um, if I'm not lying, about 11 years now. 11 years. Yeah. That's, that's quite a, a remarkable career. But there are a lot of people who are not as lucky as you and the ACNs and, you know, the rest of them. They, they just get to the local level and then that's it. You have had the opportunity of crossing the barriers, you know, going where some people were not fortunate enough to go. How did that happen for you, you know, getting into the international scene? Yeah, um, I started all as a local player. Yes. Start from third division, second division, first division mm -hmm. to premiership. Yes. I think when you get all these uh, ranks and all these steps, I think it helps you more when you get to Europe. Your game will be more polished. But if you rush to go to Europe at the age of uh, 17, 18, uh, you might end up of I mean losing a lot of chances or coming what? back to Why? Ghana. Everybody's dream is to get to Europe, right? Yeah, I mean the advice I can give is you need to take your time and then play more local league because the local league is very, very tough, it's competitive. So if you're able to play about three or four years in Ghana and try to keep your age also like going out to abroad at the age of twenty two, twenty three the exposure will be there for you. I but see. If you rush and go um, quickly at youth age, it will affect you. Yeah. yeah. I know most of these young guys will disagree with you. You know, yeah. they all want to go. All they want to do is, you know, go go abroad. But then again, you know, the football age thing that you, you mentioned, it just drew my attention to something very interesting. Sometimes they say, you know, your, your people are much older yeah. than, than the age, you know, mm -hmm. that they actually give out. Mm -hmm. how, how does that How does that work? Well, uh, people said play footballers don't use the right age, the right age. Um, yeah. and I disagree with that because um, for me, I'm 32, but sometimes when people say me, they don't believe that I'm 32, no, and some also believe that I'm old in football. It's not because I'm old in football, but I've been consistent, yeah, so the name travel, that's what I'm saying. Um, if you cheat on your age, I mean, they'll get to a time that will affect you. As a footballer, um, the age that you're supposed to retire should be age of 36, 38. But if you retire from the age of 32, 31, which is, for me, it's not normal. But, excuse me to say that, but <laughs> if, um, if you wait and play until 36, 38, then, you know, if no injury, Injury can also cause you to Absolutely. end up your career at the age of 25, 26. That's scary. Yeah. That, that, that is a scary thought. So it's like, I'm sorry, I, have to, I just have to touch you. Mm. The legs, this is what carries you. Exactly. This is it. I yeah. mean, your, so you... Your joints, yeah. Your joint, that's yeah. what carries you. So when you're walking, are you scared sometimes for your legs? You know, because if anything happens to your leg, that's it. You're, you're, you're done. No, you know. Do you insure your legs? How does that happen in football? Yeah, some does. I mean... Um, in Ghana here, some of us don't know um, how to insure your legs and also um, end of career insurance and all that. But when you travel to Europe, you get people that we call them as accountant. They look after you. They will tell you exactly, especially in the UK. Yeah. Then you, when you go to school, it's like being in school. Yeah, they will teach you all sort of uh, things that will help you after your career or during your career. So, which which is very very good. Because if you end up your career with injury and you don't have such things covering you up, I think it's going to be, be a, a problem. big problem. Yeah. It'll be a problem. It will, it will absolutely be. So, I mean, you are 32, 32. now, you said? 32 now. And uh, you hope to retire at 38? That's yeah, it depends how the body feels. But as I'm talking <laughs> now, I feel more <laughs> energetic, <laughs> feel, right? Yeah, so. Okay. So, I mean, how, how, how does it feel like? You know, I'm, I'm just a bit confused when it comes to this. You know, it's not like television where you can go till you're 70, you're 80 and decide to retire. Mm. You know when you're supposed to stop. Doesn't that make you panic a bit? Doesn't that put you a bit on edge? You know that the, the end is, is coming for football yeah. and you can just see it. Yeah, we all know that the age is supposed to be 36, 37. Then you should start off um, and hang up your boot. But if you reach that age and you feel like you can still go, I mean, you still have to go. Like nowadays in Europe, when you are 32, 31, the clubs say, no, he's old, he's like that. He's like, but it's only when you're in the scene playing regular every game, then the clubs will see, oh, 
he's old but he's still so going active. yeah so they will keep you in like uh, Ryan Giggs in Manchester United he's yeah. almost 40 years now he's, he's still, still playing absolutely. so this is how it depends how you look after yourself I mean you sleep well you eat well you train well and I mean stop off me more drinking alcohol it won't help you as a player yeah. so I mean there's certain things you need to cut it so that you can play for I mean to a, a certain yeah time. certain years so that's what I'm doing. So <laughs> anyway, this is not alcohol. This, this is not. This, you know, cheers, cheers to you. This is not alcohol. Just to be, yeah. just to be sure. <laughs> it's not. It's not alcohol. So if you just joined us, um, this is uh, Mr. Mr. John Payne. So, how is life like out there for an African footballer when you left the shores of Ghana to go? What, what team did you first play for? Bukumasnas. No, I mean when you when you went outside internationally. Um, yeah, I went to Israel, Israel. Um, so Maccabi Tel Aviv. Yeah, okay. then before I moved, after two years, I moved to Hapoel Tel Aviv. Then two years after, I moved to West Ham. Okay. Yeah, then two years after West Ham, I moved to Fulham. Okay. For three years. And then after three years, Leicester City. You've then had then, a wonderful career. <laughs> yeah, then Leicester City, I went back to uh, uh, Israel, Hapoel Tel Aviv. And now I'm a free agent. Okay. For new club, yeah. Okay. But what is this association with Israel? You keep going back, back, back there. Well, yeah, I am. Um, it's like. The, the people that where I started my career and they believe in me and they have respect for me. So it's like the team that when I'm playing for them, I always go there, like give my heart to to play for the team, to get a pick up yes. yeah, my star because they think um, I'm too uh, good to play there. But as a footballer, there's nothing good or bigger than it's only when you are free to play. Yeah. Everything is an experience, right? Exactly. It is. What is, a, what is a day in your life like? You know, people assume that. I asked Emmanuel Eboué this question before that, you know, do you train every day? He said, no, I'm not a machine. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so what is a day, uh, a day a day in your life like? What, what, what really happens? Yeah, like right now, um, off season like that, um, you play, I have to train every week, every day. You can't do it twice or once, but I have to be uh, medium, like 80% before you go to your club okay. because football is when you sit home for three days without doing anything it's like staying home for one month or two months doing anything it's very really difficult just yeah. three days is yeah. difficult yeah so you have to be constantly you have to active. Be active yeah you have to be active the problem then it should be like psychological torture for the people who retire from football i mean finally when you retire yeah. in your home and you don't hear anybody cheering you on, nothing right. like that. That should be difficult, right? Um, well, um, it shouldn't be difficult because you know you've been there before. And that's what I'm saying. Um, when you're in the pub, uh, public eye, you are um, moving at, so you're moving always. Try and do the right thing, do the good thing. Absolutely. You play good. So after your career, you'll still be who you are. And people recognize you, think what the, all the good things that you did for Ghana. Not like so. our senior um, captain Stephen Appiah, I mean, I admire him a lot. Absolutely, that guy, <laughs> he's amazing, and even still, he's still trained. He has uh, a good yeah, personality. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's still pushing that he can still play. I train with him every day at uh, complex. Uh, yeah. yeah. So I mean, he's not giving up, and I always always look up to him. Absolutely. Yeah, he's okay. fantastic. Guy. Stephen, you're next. If you're watching me right now you know you are next in the hot seat. But um, one of the main reasons why I wanted to talk to you today was about uh, something that happened, you know, the, it was blown, you know, it made you look really bad. It made you look really, really bad. For those of you who do not know, there was this incident about him and his wife and some people told the story like it was, it was some Chinese movie, I'm really <laughs> sorry, you know. It, 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 it was really, really bad. Um, now that you're here, uh, I want to hear from you because now the image that's been painted of you is rather unfortunate. People yes. think you're a very violent person and you're, you're not kind to women and you beat women and yeah. that is a lot to carry on your head. Yeah. What do you have to tell me about you and your wife? Yeah, um, first of all, thank you for bringing this up. I think um, since that incident happened, uh, I've been got opportunity to come up to speak to my uh, my fans and those who believe in me and who think I can do that, or those who think yeah John did that. You know, I think it was a, a misquote um, how the 
police treat the case and also how the media also carry the, the things to the net because mm -hmm. today everything that you write on the net everyone picks it everyone and then it, it goes around yeah and I'm innocent about um, all the, the news that was published about innocent. me stabbing my wife and I mean nobody that has brain or in my in my career level would do such thing so you did not stab her no 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 such thing didn't happen i mean even right now we are we are okay we are good we're looking after the, our kids we're looking okay i mean so i mean what they wrote against me you now that has also uh, caused my career and my uh, my job every team that i go they just go go and it comes out uh, let, me, let me get this straight because of the incident with your wife you having problems with your career right now very very because same thing happened um like i don't want to say this but i'll say this what happened before the case happened was my wife took my passport ran to my neighbor's house gave it to my neighbor which i don't want to mention the man's name but he knows okay. himself and they kept their passport for two weeks so after it was published that my club has terminated my contract that was when i received a call from Senna radio that somebody brought my passport to them that person claiming that he the person took the passport from Seco, that, but I didn't want it. John Pencil's passport at Seco, that, yes. that is like one of the weird yes. things that you and could have I know, I uh, believe that uh, my wife took it and she told me that they give it to the neighbor. Why, why, did she, why did she take it? I don't know. And she, she didn't even, want you to travel? She no. missed you, maybe, you know, <laughs> you know, we women, we can do crazy yeah, things Yeah, because at that time she was a bit upset about what was happening in the house. And I mean, it's normal that um, my, my man, my woman, I mean, have problems sometimes, but um, the way things goes, uh, I didn't like it the way she took the passport to the neighbor and the neighbor also keep the passport. She went there to beg the neighbor and the wife to release the passport. The man swore to God that they don't have the passport. So they kept the passport for two weeks while my club was also waiting for me after the nation. And you had to travel to go sign your contract? No, I have to go and continue. Continue your contract? contract. Yeah. And there too, uh, there's only five professionals allowed to play for the team. So whilst I wasn't there, I wasn't coming, they tried to contact me and I told them I can't find my passport. So they went ahead and bringing a new professional to get five. So after two weeks getting my passport and one day, I was the sixth one. So I couldn't play. I was freeze. They won't pay you, they won't do anything. You have to stay there until the end of the season. And when you're not playing, it also affects you. No team will see you and then get you and give you opportunity to establish it. So for me, um, it's been um, a tough time for me now, but I will use this opportunity to advise our media that we all work together. Okay. So such thing, we should address it well and also uh, investigate it before we Absolutely. publish such things. Because right now as I'm talking, if I'm lying, you can go on net and go away. I know, I, yeah. I read about it. Like I was saying, you know, I read about it and the story, it made you look very violent. Yeah. If I if I didn't know you personally, you know, I would, I would, I would, I would, I would have believed it. You understand? But I know you, and that was where I was able to draw my line yeah. a bit. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. And uh, like you rightly said, every marriage goes through problems. You know, I think that if if we are to find out what happens in every individual's home. Yeah. What, the kind of stories that would be, you should find out what happens in my home, you know, the kind of stories that will come out won't be favorable to anybody. So what he is saying was that it was just a problem that he had with his wife, just normal husband-wife mm. problem. And then she probably got upset, took the passport, didn't want you to travel, gave it to a neighbor. Neighbor claims they didn't have the passport. Yeah. His club was waiting for him to come and continue. And because of the two-week absence, you know, his virtually terminated, mm. right? Contract yeah. terminated. So, do you blame, your, who do you blame? Who do you blame? I blame the neighbor because um, I think the neighbor has something against me and I, somebody I don't know, I've never seen, I never agreed before until that day when the incident happened. My, for him to keep my passport for two weeks, which I knew. Well, somebody yeah. asked that maybe, did your wife tell him to keep the passport and when you come, they should say they, they don't have it? No, you know? I was there when, the, when my wife went there to beg, crying, lying on the floor. And because the man, the man assaulted me, and I assaulted him too. So he, he went assaulted there. you. Yes, in his house because I went there to get my passport, and he came and slapped me from behind. 
I slap him back. Of course. So he called police that uh, stabbed my wife. So he it was the neighbor who was pushing the, the, the case for yeah. So I can't blame the woman. I mean, people get upset, they do things, and then later they regret. And I can't sit down here and say that because of her, that's why my job is uh, at stake or anything. But it's the neighbor that I will, I will blame. You blame. Yeah. Wow. Thank you. Thank you for clearing this up. I know how difficult it is, you know. It's, it's, it's not, your job is not one of those that you can just send an application to somewhere and then you have somebody recommend it. You know, it, it takes, so I can understand the frustration. The time, yeah. Yes, I can understand the frustration that you're going through. So how are you dealing with it now? I mean, what are you doing? Because well, it is a difficult period. It is. Yeah, there's nothing I can do. I mean, um, it's only those who trust you who take you and also um, I always me I'm a Christian and I believe uh, God was and I know one day one day or short period things can change yeah. I believe I have to keep believing not to think about what a human being has done to me or anything absolutely. yeah absolutely <laughs> I'm sorry I mean because this is a very twisted it, it, it is. I mean, it's it's rather unfortunate. So your 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 club now, uh, they put you on hold. No, um, they were supposed to uh, renew my contract. It was one year option to to renew to renew. But because of the incident, they brought one player to replace me, and they can have uh, six six, prof so six professionals. Yeah, so it's five. So they let me go uh, after um, the last season. So, so now I'm free player, and then I'm still searching for club to. I can I can guarantee you that you probably find a better team than that. I can well. I can I can confidently guarantee you that. You know what what, what team are you hoping to play for? Let's let's move on to a lighter a lighter side. Oh, we are hoping Before for Deportivo, maybe yeah, we, <laughs> your team, right? <laughs> My team. We're hoping for the best, and God time is the best. I believe that uh, very soon um, our tent is around. Absolutely, and, yeah. absolutely. So tell me a bit. Tell me a bit about about your family. I mean, how many how many kids? Yeah, I've um, got two girls and one boy. Mm -hmm. um, they're so lovely. Florencia, Rihanna, Junior John Pento. Uh, Junior John Pento. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> is he following in daddy's footsteps? Yeah, he's very good. He can kick well. He's just two. He's ten and three. Mm -hmm. um, and November, and I'm. Um, I'm glad that um, the three of them birthday will be in November. All of them are November born. November. Wow! <laughs> you should show me the secret. Yeah. <laughs> you should show me how you did that yeah, so I can, I can plan yeah, it. Yeah, it's God. November nine, November ten, November eleven. So. God no, has, God has there has to be an explanation to this one. <laughs> oh my God! All his kids are born in November nine, ten, and eleven. Yeah. Come on, man! You need to give me the secret. <laughs> I'll be right back. You need to give me the secret. <laughs> Stay tuned, don't go away. We'll be right back. Welcome back. I'm still here and I'm having a little chit chat with uh, Mr. John Painso, footballer extraordinaire. And we've gone through a couple of issues, the most important being the issue with his wife and how the media blew it out of proportion. So now you've heard his side of the story. Do not believe everything you read, else everybody will be the devil in your eyes. All right? Every marriage goes through its problems. He had his fair share of their problems and then it just went a different way. Okay? So, um, you know, I saw some pictures of you in your jersey, and it's, it's one hand, and one hand is, is shorts. How, how, is that your mojo or something? Yeah. <laughs> is that your good luck charm? Um, well, uh, that's, uh, I had a dream about it before um, the World Cup. Oh. And yeah. Not me using that shirt, but I saw someone um, in my dream okay. playing with uh, one long, one short. And I said, okay, yeah. During the World Cup, I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna do the same thing, and then 
see how it goes. Okay. And yeah, I did the first one and yeah, I had a, a good game in the beginning and I continued with it <laughs> until we ended up. <laughs> <laughs> And that we have uh, also uh, a good, good tournament. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So, uh, what were people's reaction? Because when I saw it, I'm thinking, I, I, I don't know what I, what I even thought about it. What were people's reaction when you entered the pitch? Somebody said you were hurt. You know, I read it somewhere that you were, you were, you were hurt. You know, that's why the bandage was there. You know, how ridiculous. This, this <laughs> thing. Yeah, I mean, there was a lot of uh, speculations. People were talking about it and they didn't understand why one long, one short. Uh -huh. And they keep asking questions. <laughs> and I said, okay, I will answer until the end of uh, the tournament. The tournament, yeah. great, So great. that's the, the secret of what happened. So you had a dream and then yeah, you thought? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So it worked for a while? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Are you I still going to continue the one arm? Oh, no, I'll stop it. <laughs> it's almost um, a year now. A year yeah. now, great. You, your work is like a, a musician you know uh, fans are attracted to you everywhere you go you understand and uh, i know that the, the wife normally has a difficult time adjusting to uh, her husband and female fans you know she can't do anything about it i mean you are part of their lives how are you able to draw the line when it comes to you know all these women around yeah, I think uh, she understands it well, that um, every professional footballer, especially when you become more famous, um, the f your fans will be more than, I mean, how you could talk. And she knows, sometimes when I'm working with her on the street, she know how people come, so I want to have a picture with you, I want to oh get God. your autograph and all that. So I don't think um, she's the kind of person who, like, jealous on when... She's not when jealous? No, she is, but really? not, not about when the fans come to me, like oh. have no autograph, and then she's a woman being, she will feel some kind of way. But um, what I've observed, I've learned to see on her is um, she's not the type that question me about fans coming to me for autographs. Really? Yeah. Okay. I have a man who works, you know, has the kind of job where he's in contact with ladies every time, and I keep asking ridiculous questions every now. <laughs> Every every now and then, so she's totally she's totally okay. Yeah, but um, you don't have to give your your numbers out for them to call you. Yes. But if they meet you on the street, taking the pictures or autograph, that one is okay. But it is. Okay. yeah, you okay. can't be with your wife when a fan's calling that fan you. Call you. That, that if is, you make a fan call you, that no, no, no one will take it. That, no, 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 no. That one, the jealousy <laughs> bit will yeah. fly. Sometimes you have all these girls who they dream about, you know, celebrities and fall in love with them even without meeting them and do crazy yeah. things to themselves. Yeah. Have you met any of such crazy people? Not at all. Not, <laughs> Not God bless you for that. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. How about when it comes to the issue of, um, you know, the change in lifestyle from Rekum to the international scene? I'm told that when you have money, a lot of things change. Your style, your taste and everything changes. Yeah. Have you changed since, you know, you, you went international and made a lot of money? Um, yes, I mean, money-wise and also um, living, a um, lot of things have changed um, compared to where I started from and to now. I can, when I was starting, I didn't have a home for myself, but right now I can say, okay, I have a place that I can, I can sleep. I can where, where is that place? You say so uh, modestly. Where, where do you live? I live in Trasaco. Oh, it's, it's, it's not just a place, it's, it's <laughs> yeah, Trasaco. I mean, a place that even when I don't have food, I will sit home and drink water. Nobody will know. Nobody will know. Yes. Yeah, lucky so, you. Yeah. And what I've learned also is um, when, when you're getting up, getting money, that's where your expenses also go up. So for me, um, I don't want to see uh, our upcoming boys in that, those things because Absolutely. yeah, it's not, it's not a good thing. I mean, you should also or always remember where you're coming from and be, try and be there for people when you have, you give to people who Absolutely. don't have, yeah. Absolutely. Because Absolutely. one person cannot eat. No, no, absolutely. <laughs> I have a problem with um, people who are big celebrities, you know, footballers. I just can't wrap my mind around it that they were famous, they had all the money, and then at the end of their careers, they didn't invest anything and then they just go bankrupt. And I, that can be suicidal because you, you were famous, you, you, you had everything, and now you've retired. You're supposed to enjoy your earnings, and then you have absolutely nothing. Do you have any financial or investment advice? Of course, you're investing, yeah. I know. Yeah. Do you have any advice to these young boys who are coming and it's just, they're into cars and shoes yeah. and clothes? Um, uh, injuries can cause your career end. 
as uh, young players, uh, uh, I have to advise that um, the beginning when they get opportunity, they should make sure they invest. Yes, they know our career is not a work. For me, I see it like, um, um, how, how do you call it? It's, it's not, it's not a, a work. That it's we, not forever. Yeah, yeah it's not forever work. Forever. Yeah, it's like part-time job. <laughs> That's how I see uh, football is. That's somebody's dream, you know. Uh, you no, know, that's how I see it because when you, when you get it, you have to take what what is there and then make use of it. Absolutely. Because when the injury comes, that's it. No, Absolutely. no team will, will take you because Absolutely. to be on your record and to go effective. Yeah, so I advise yes, my uh, my young ones that um, when they get opportunity, they should make sure Absolutely. save it. Absolutely. What is your best moment? Do you have any most memorable moments? Maybe a goal you scored or a particular you know, tournament that was so memorable on your mind? Do you have any? Um, yeah, that was 2008 um, when Fulham was on the good tough. Mm -hmm. When I was playing for Fulham, that was the year the, the club reached in seventh mm -hmm. position. And we also continue to play Europa Cup to the final. Wow. That was the amazing. It was a good moment. <laughs> it was a Yay. good, good moment. And I've never thought uh, there will be a day like that. Wonderful. Yeah. That's wonderful. Uh, share your favorite things with us. I like to watch movies in the middle of the night when everybody's asleep, you know, so the people in my house are not quite happy with me, with my habits, <laughs> you know. I'm, a, I'm an introvert. I like indoors. I have a close circle of friends. I don't get out that much. So the kind of things that I like are just, you know, basic, nice things. Yeah. What kind of things are you into? Do you like clubbing? Do you like the beach? Do you like, what, what, what do you like doing? Um, I'm not into clubbing. Clubbing is medium to me. Mm -hmm. And also, um, I don't drink alcohol. I never oh, you smoke. don't? I never drink alcohol. No alcohol, no smoke? No smoke. And also, I love to stay home. I mean, those indoors guy. Um, you and I will get along perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> always want to stay home and watch uh, my previous games and then try to polish uh, my game because since I'm still in the career moving, I'm not perfect until I finish to become like a coach. Okay. So, um, still learning. I can't see myself that I'm already there, but it's good to watch your games that's and polish it. So wonderful. that's most of the time that's what I do. That's what you do. I hardly watch myself. It's just a bit weird for me. I'm sitting down watching myself talking. Sometimes it scares me. You know, it's like a, another version. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's a bit weird. So you, you want to be a coach one day? Oh yeah, one day, one day, sure. What's your favorite food on the spot? I'm into iron, plantain. <laughs> Plantain. Mm -hmm. So the garden next to you. I'm Pessier yeah. Garden next to you. Yeah. And uh, favorite designer? Oh, I don't want. You don't, I don't have it. You don't have any favorite yeah. designer. I put any everything. Everything oh, anything, goes. Anything goes. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Anyway, so uh, any message you have for your fans who are watching you, and then anything, anything else you like to tell them? Well, uh, greetings to all my fans, the loved ones. Still JP, still working hard to put smile on your face. Don't give up. There's time for everything, and I'm working towards it. So I think everyone, all the fans have heard what I've explained, and whatever you heard on media and all that, it's not true. Those who know me, know me. May God bless you all, and then I wish you all the best in your life. Thank you. Thank you, too. Thank you. Cheers to you. I like the way you say JP. JP, it sounds like a name of a musician, you know. Jake. Maybe you should enter music, you know. Can't you see him on an album, like a hip life for JP? My, my people are giving you fans there, right? Yeah. <laughs> Have you considered music? Of course not. <laughs> Thank you so no much. Me, yeah. Thank you. It's such a pleasure having yeah, you. Absolutely. And then we wish you well. Uh, we hope that, like I said, the club that you will get will be much bigger than the ones that let you go. And I'm happy that you came today and explained the situation with your wife. For those of you who missed out on that one, it was just a, a family problem, you know, usual husband-wife problem. The wife took the passport, hid it in the next house, you know, probably just to prevent him from traveling. They solved the problem. The wife now wants the passport back. Neighbor won't give it back. And for two weeks, he had to stay here. And before he got the passport back, he had lost his contract, you know. So now he is here telling you exactly what happened. And our prayers are with him. And we know that the next time we see you, you'll be on a bigger platform. Yeah, I'm maybe. confident yeah, about maybe. that. So thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. And watch Deportivo, it's important. We'll do. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you for watching this interview with me today. And uh, 
keep watching the show i love you lots bye